Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with On Point Politics and today I'm going to be talking about Donald Trump's multiple paths to the White House as of right now. Make sure to go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new and make sure to drop a comment down below. And so, guys, pretty much right now, I'm projecting Donald Trump to win against Joe Biden pretty easily. However, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, you know, basically give you guys another scenario. What if the election is extremely close like it has been, you know, the past two elections? And again, anything can change. So the election could narrow up, which my model should reflect that if polling data and Biden's approval rating continues to improve. Like if Biden keeps narrowing the gap in the aggregate like he has. Has been the past couple of days or so and he starts taking the lead and things kind of change my model should reflect a much closer race it's just that with the current data donald trump is ahead by quite a bit and hispanic shifts don't tend to help biden in a state like new mexico arizona florida or texas either but let's say the national environment is leaning biden you know let's say it's close like the last couple of cycles that would put these states in the republican column very safely you know these wouldn't really be contested for the most part iowa and ohio would be in the double digits but probably like 10 11 point victories in each state as of right now nebraska's first would be safe nebraska at large would be pretty much around a safe margin as well you'd have texas and florida still being likely states as well as the state of south carolina being safe i would expect alaska to be likely in this scenario just because it is a left trending state and texas and florida would still be likely in this scenario because donald trump is going to make gains here no matter what i expect texas to be a seven point win in this scenario and florida would be around an eight or nine point victory in this scenario biden on the other hand would be winning california and washington by over 15 points as well as dc maryland massachusetts it's Vermont, Connecticut, Rhode Island by the safe column, as well as New York and not even Illinois, actually. I actually think Illinois would still be a likely state. However, I do think Colorado would end up falling above the 15-point category, including the state of Oregon. So you would have an interesting map where Illinois and basically Illinois is voting to the right of most of the deep blue states and Colorado would be a huge victory for Biden. New Jersey and Delaware, I'd expect them to be likely victories. They have been trending pretty right compared to the nation, you know, compared to most of the northeastern states. And so that is one thing to seriously take into account. New Mexico is interesting because I actually think it would still be like an eight point win for Biden, even like a seven point win. It would vote significantly to the right of Colorado just because of the fact Trump would be improving with Hispanic voters. If the election was still this close, I would expect Biden to do very well with suburban white women. He'd be doing very good with college educated voters, which is not very likely he's going to maintain his 20 margin, but he'd be improving with the issue of abortion. A lot of never Trumpers would essentially be coming out in this scenario. Hawaii would be safe. The Democrats would basically funnel a very, very big, you know, mail in operation in this scenario and trump's base would kind of be not enthusiastic to come out just because maybe a lot of the base feels like oh their vote's not going to count so we're not going to vote anyway which is what i see a lot of you guys actually put in the comment section i'd advise you guys to not think that way i'd actually advise you guys to come out and vote because there is a serious possibility for donald trump to win this election there's a lot of people who are dooming on him because oh the election's rigged and you know we can you know there may or may not be magic tricks up their sleeve, but we can't play like we're destined to lose. We have to play as if, you know, we are going to have a shot at winning. I'd actually expect Virginia to be in the likely Democratic column and probably be a seven or eight point win, kind of similar to New Mexico. They'd be around the similar margins in this scenario. Now, Maine second would be likely, including Maine's first being safe and Maine at large. We'll get to the rest of the states now. Well, we essentially have the major swing states up for grabs as of right now and what's interesting is georgia and north carolina i'd expect them to be lean in donald trump's column this you could say is theoretically a biden best case scenario sort of so i'd say you know donald trump would still win north carolina by two and a half he'd win georgia by like a point a point and a half that's probably what he ends up winning it by. I just can't see Biden turning out that many, you know, lower propensity African-American voters 
as of right now, I think it's going to be extremely difficult for Biden to pull off either of these states. And the Biden campaign, for whatever reason, wants to campaign in Texas, in Florida, in Georgia, in North Carolina, which Georgia and North Carolina sure go ahead. I mean, you could try, but there are likely victories, according to my latest forecast, which I'm going to I'm actually going to link that in the top right of the corner in this video. So you guys can go ahead and look at that video. But pretty much. In North Carolina and Georgia, there's too much African-American population there, which is a demographic that Biden, as the incumbent president, is polling in the mid-60s, low 70s with as a Democrat. That is extremely bad polling numbers for him. So even if they were to improve, I'd expect them to still, you know, underperform with that demographic compared to 2020. And I wouldn't be able to see him win you know, these two states. And so that puts Trump at 251 electoral college votes. And this is where Donald Trump's paths of victory come in. He could win with Arizona, which is a state with a lot of Hispanic voters. However, I do think in a scenario like this, I think Biden would actually pull out Arizona by a lean margin just because of the fact that white working, you know, basically white suburbanites would probably be shifting towards Biden by quite a bit. The whole abortion issue would really be milked, you know, in this, you know, a scenario. So I do think that that state would end up being lean Democrat. But for the sake of hypothetical, Donald Trump could win with Wisconsin and Arizona, which would have been his 2020 path to victory. He could simply win with the state of Pennsylvania, which if I was if I were to be Trump's campaign advisor right now, I would literally tell him, don't even worry about going to Minnesota. Don't worry about going to New Hampshire or New York. I mean, he could go there because polling does show him within a couple points in those states. And even in Minnesota and New Jersey, he's within the margin of error, including Virginia. However, I think, you know, he needs to play this election as if he's going to eke it out by barely anything. And so really, he should be going to Georgia and Pennsylvania. Those are the main two states he needs needs to be going to the most because if he could simply just do that he'd win exactly 270 electoral college votes as of right now and so that puts him in a position to win fairly easily another scenario where he could win is through Michigan and Nevada that would be another electoral college scenario he could also win through now what's interesting to note is that the polling in Maine actually has him ahead there in states even more than like Wisconsin Michigan and Pennsylvania he's actually ahead in Maine in the polling by more than some of these states and right behind that comes Pennsylvania but then Ahead of both of these states is actually the state of Nevada, which is quite interesting. And Arizona is actually ahead of that. So if you actually looked at the polling aggregates, the states where he's leading the most in, you know, besides Georgia, North Carolina, is Arizona, Nevada, and Maine at large, believe it or not. And so with the states he's currently leading in, in the aggregates, without even counting the Rust Belt and in New Hampshire, without Nebraska second, he'd already get to 270 electoral votes. He could do a Sunbelt strategy, pick somebody like a Marco Rubio, and kind of go out there and kind of capture some Hispanics. And he may even be able to win Minnesota if he picked Rubio, because Rubio actually won the primary here in 2016, despite all odds. And that probably appealed to voters like in Minnesota, like in, you know, Maine at large, like New Hampshire. It seems like he has a weird appeal with Hispanics and some voters in like the northern part of the a country, which I think is fairly interesting. This is another path he could win through. He could also win through Michigan. And he could also win through New Hampshire. Now, you may say, well, Donald Trump can't pick off the state of New Hampshire. It's going to be too difficult. Well, not necessarily. Right now, Biden only leads there in the aggregate by around two and a half points. And the polling there underestimated Trump by four points in 2020. And so if you were to actually do a polling aggregate miss, he actually leads the state by two points, according to a polling miss from 2020 when applied to the current polling data. And so this is another plausible path that he has another path that he could take is just simply get you know arizona and he can get the state of michigan another path he could more than likely take is win nevada and arizona and get nebraska's second congressional district that would put him at a tie which i think the house of representatives would still elect him in this scenario and so he's got multiple paths to winning this he's got around five or six paths to win the election the simplest being pennsylvania the one that i think would be the most difficult would probably be like if i had to put out a crazy scenario for him out there i think the hardest one would probably be 
like if I had to do a crazy path to victory for him, I think the craziest one would be like Minnesota and like Wisconsin essentially. Like if he were to win through both of those states, that'd be the craziest one. You know, technically Nebraska's second main at large in New Hampshire. Like if he were to win all those states first, he'd still need another state, which would probably be Nevada at that point. That would be a crazy path, but that was just for, you know, for fun. I don't think he'd end up winning through that path either way. And so if I had to fill out the rest of these states in this kind of scenario, I'd expect Biden to win Arizona. Like if he's winning the popular vote by the same amount in 2020, which is essentially that's what this is. If you were to win the popular vote by the same amount, I'd expect him to win Arizona by a couple of points. I think he'd win it by about one and a half. Maricopa County would just trend too far to the left. I'd see Wisconsin being a tilt margin of victory. It'd be very close, but I think the African-American support here would actually carry him over. Same thing in a state like Michigan and Pennsylvania. I do think he'd pick off the Rust Belt here just because of the fact that the Rust Belt has always voted together since the 1998 you know, 1992 presidential election, actually. Wisconsin did not vote with Michigan and Pennsylvania in 1988. Ever since 1992, which is about basically over almost 30 years or so, they've been voting together in every single U.S. presidential election. I think he'd lose New Hampshire, Maine at large. And uh, at this point, you'd have, you know, a couple of states. I'd expect him to lose Minnesota in this scenario still. Now, what's quite interesting is that I actually think that Nevada would not go to Trump in this scenario because if he's doing this good in Arizona, I think it would translate to Nevada. And I think that Trump would fall ever so slightly short in Nevada. I think the white vote would just not let him win um, the Electoral College here, unfortunately. And that Nebraska second district would probably be tilt blue. So in a very, you know, contentious scenario where Donald Trump is winning the popular vote, or excuse me, Biden's winning the popular vote by like four and a half, four points, you this would probably be the map. And you could see a state like Pennsylvania and Michigan flip, which would put Joe Biden on the top. However, I don't think that's very likely. But I could see it also in this scenario, since Trump is doing, you know, poorly with the white vote, I could see Wisconsin vote to the left of the other Rust Belt states. Like Trump could theoretically lose one of the Rust Belt states in this scenario, which if he were to actually lose Pennsylvania, he'd be very short of losing the election. But as long as he holds on to two out of the three, he could still win even in this scenario. He could afford to lose one out of the three and still win the Electoral College here, which is pretty interesting. He could actually even afford to lose Michigan in this scenario and hold on to Pennsylvania, just like I talked about, for his easiest path. He could literally hold on to Pennsylvania and still win the Electoral College, which, funny enough, you know, the other months everyone was like, oh, well, oh, but Trump's polling lead in Pennsylvania is the worst out of all the Rust Belt states. You know, Trump's going to underperform in Pennsylvania because the polling shows him behind. Now, funny enough, Trump's biggest polling lead in the Rust Belt states is actually Pennsylvania. And I knew that it was going to take a while for the aggregate to catch on to that. The reason why I suspect that being the case is because Donald Trump you know, not only did very well there in 2016, but also there's a large demographic here that voted for Biden simply because of the fact that this was his quote unquote home state. And so I feel like that's kind of gone away. You do see a lot of new registries for Republicans here. You know, Josh Shapiro, the governor here, tried imposing automatic voting registration, you know, when you would go get your license. And funny enough, almost all of the new registries are actually Republican voters or even independent. Barely any of them are Democrats. And so that massively backfired. You also have Scott Presler in the state of Pennsylvania really helping, you know, registries, you know, basically register Republican here. So that is definitely helping there. So with all those factors combined and with a basically a mixed demographic of like Hispanic voters, white working class voters, black voters, I think that's why Pennsylvania is Donald Trump's strongest polling lead as of right now. And so in this scenario, I'd say Donald Trump gets around 295. If I was campaign manager, I would just tell him, go to Pennsylvania, go to Georgia and get just get your 270 and walk out of there. If you win all the other ones, you could win them. But if you get Pennsylvania and Georgia, that basically calls it a day. And so if you guys did enjoy this quick analysis, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to go ahead and follow the Twitter and join the Discord server in the description down below. And I will see you guys very, very soon.